Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Donna, and for those of you not new, thank you so much for continuing to come back and support my channel. I appreciate all of you so, so very much. Today I am doing episode 109 of my palette roulette series in which I let an app choose a palette for me to utilize throughout the week, come back to you, give you my thoughts on the palette, my review, my experiences, show you some pictures, show you some swatches, and then we pick a new palette. Today's palette that we are going over is the Ofra Glitch palette. This palette was launched in January, and since then they've launched two more Glitch palettes, the Glitch 2000 and then a Glitch Glamour, I think. I do have one of the other two. I haven't picked up the third one. The Glamour Glitch yet, but I don't know that I will. This palette comes in at 4.8 stars on Ulta Beauty with 67 reviews, and it comes in at 4.8 stars on Ofra with 60 reviews. I don't think that that is necessarily inaccurate. I think that I would probably rate it 4.6, 4.7 maybe 4.8 somewhere in there um this palette is $29 it has 18 grams or 2 grams per pan and I know I went with grams and I typically go with ounces let me put on my glasses because that's teeny tiny just one second <laughs> okay let's see ounces this palette does have 0.63 ounces of product in it, which means each one of the pans has 0.07 ounces of shadow, which is a fairly large pan, actually. When you think of it in like the thought process of like an AB8 shadow in one of their palettes is 0.04 ounces, I think, three something ounces. A ColourPop single is 0.048 ounces, so almost 0.05. So 0.07 ounces is actually a pretty decent sized pan. There are nine shadows in this palette, so those are they, and each one of them is a metallic shadow. They are that liquid to baked formula that Ofra is known for in their highlighters. These are very much the same. You could use these as highlighters on your face as well. I would say some of them are probably too dark for you to use as highlighters on your face, but I guess if you wanted to, a dark gray highlighter, you would have one. I would say this is a really good palette. I do like the mirror on it. I think it's rather bulky for nine shades. What I love about it is they, it is a magnetic palette, so you can pop these pans out, put them into a magnetic palette, or pop these pans out, put other shadows in here. What I'm thinking about doing is taking my little X-Acto knife and cutting along the edges here so that there's kind of like a, a shield from them getting out into the universe, but also taking the other nine pan palette that I have just like this and cutting away enough of this like foaminess that I can put the other nine shadows in here. I just think this palette is so so very bulky for just the nine shadows that are in here. And I, I love the palette. I think it's beautiful, but I think that it could have been a lot smaller, especially since it's just nine shades. These shadows are fairly pigmented. This dark, this dark gray right here is on my lid space today. And this mint green is on my inner corner today. Now, mind you, my eyes are watering like crazy. So it has taken away a lot of the color on the inner corner. So don't use that as a justification for thinking these aren't as pigmented as they are because they really are very pigmented shadows. It's definitely not a standalone palette though because they are all metallic. So unless you're willing to do metallic clear into your crease and whatnot, which I have been prone to do, I have done that in the past, but unless you're willing to do that every single day, this isn't going to be your one and done palette. This isn't going to be a palette that you can continue to utilize every single day for every single eye look. Also, it's very pastel in nature, which isn't typically my jam, but it might be yours. And if that's the case, this is a great palette for you. But if that, if you're more like me and you require just a little bit more oomph in your, in your everyday eye looks, this isn't going to be your standalone sh shadow palette. It is definitely going to be one that you, you know, use in conjunction with another one, which isn't bad necessarily. 
I would say these are super pigmented. I would say that they are not prone to fallout. I didn't have any fallout issues with these shadows except for one and I think it was just that I had packed it on my brush so so much that there was just too much on my brush. They're super pigmented, they're super buildable, they're super blendable, there is no creasing with this. I will not forget that there was one eye look that I did one day and I had that eye look on my face for probably 15 hours and it looked spectacular from the minute I put it on to the minute I took it off. I wasn't wearing this mascara. That might be the problem. So you're going to get a wear time of a minimum of probably 12 hours out of this shadow palette and no creasing, no fading, beautiful shades overall. I also will say like this look today was applied dry but these shadows also apply well wet. I don't think that you need them to be wet though to get the payoff that you want from them and they are more of a like sheeny sparkle, a highlight sparkle than they are like a glitter sparkle so you don't have to worry about like you know glitter all over your face, anything like that happening or fallout throughout the day. That just doesn't happen with these shadows. This is mostly cool toned and it is inspired by the early 2000s electric pop scene where you're seeing a lot of like hot pinks, a lot of like vibrant purples, a lot of like even neon minty greens. That is what this palette is inspired by, which is why it's called the Glitch Palette. There was a point in time where I put, I believe it was this shade in an eye look with another color and it didn't really 100% play well with the other one, but I'm not really sure that that was this shade's fault. The other one I paired it with was kind of an older shade in my collection and sometimes they lose a little bit of their oomph, but also, I think that I was just having a rough morning that morning trying to slap an eye look on pretty hurriedly and you could definitely see the indication where this shade stopped and the other shade began. I didn't do a grand job of marrying the two shades together. So I'm not going to tell you that they don't play well together. I'm going to tell you that I experienced that with one shade the rest of the week. I didn't really have a problem getting these shades to blend well. I think taking that picture of myself and going back through those pictures for the day really made me recognize that maybe I had failed that shade that day instead of the other way around. I think that they apply very well with a brush. I used, so this is dirty obviously, I used it today. This is an Esam W23 brush and this is what it looks like. It is kind of a more fluffy but super dense packed packer brush if that makes any sense here let me get super up close for you so you can see see it's a little bit fluffy uh, but not it's super dense it's super densely packed and I did use this brush almost all week to put the shadow onto my lid what I can say is it you can flip it and get into that like inner corner area really good and you can pat or swipe on the shadows and it works really good. I don't know that these would necessarily work with a fluffier brush than this, but they worked really well with this brush as well as a really thin, densely packed brush. So I would also say that they work really well with your finger. So if you use a fluffier brush, you're going to get more of that like Ofra highlighter effect on your eye than what you get from a densely packed brush. But they do work really well with your finger as well. So I think it works just as well with a primer as it does without. If you're looking for just a really pretty pop of pastel yumminess on your lid, this is going to be a really perfect palette for you. They also can double as highlighters in your menagerie of makeup. So that's where I think that this can be something that is really versatile. For a lot of people. We're going to go through the shades and I am going to tell you all about them. So these are the first three in the palette and you do have Arcade which is a metallic mint green and then you have 
this one here, which is Y2K. It is a cool gold metallic. This one does have a little bit of shimmeriness in it, but I don't find that it made it perform any differently than any of the other ones. And then this one here is going to be called Dial Up, and it is a smoky indigo blue metallic, and it is so, so pretty. I actually did wear this as a almost one shadow eye look the other day, and it was just really pretty and dark and sultry. I also wore it on the lid with like a green upper section. <laughs> I've, I, I'm telling you, I've not necessarily had the best time with this palette, but I think a lot of it is because I've dipped in to my single shadows and to colors that are unexpected colors to go with these, you know, pastel shades, and I've not necessarily made the best choices, so it's not this palette's fault. It's definitely mine. These are the second row. What a pretty row, right? So the first one in that second row is going to be this one, which is called Rhinestones. And I put it next to that teal on purpose. You guys can see how similar those are. I do not think both of those needed to be in this palette. They're, they're different, but they are super similar. So I definitely don't think both of them needed to be in here. And this one, um, Rhinestones, it, I mean, Mood Ring is what this one is called. Um, Mood Ring is this aqua blue metallic that I just, it wasn't my favorite one to play with. I don't think it's all that pretty. It doesn't last very long on my lid. This was the only one that I really had like a stand out <laughs> opinion on because the rest of them were so, so nice. This one here is rhinestones and this is a snow white metallic and it does have some shimmer inside of it i don't again see any kind of like glitteriness about it it just is really super super pretty and then we have this purple which is called forever and it is a deep amethyst metallic all right this is that last row this this gray here is what is all over my lid today it's a really pretty gray. So that gray is called Beeper, and that is what it looks like. It is a really pretty metallic, like steely gray with shimmer. Does it have a little bit of shimmery reflect to it? I don't think, I mean, you this one you can see the like shimmeriness of it. You can see the like almost silver glitteriness to it, but it doesn't translate any differently on the eye than the rest of them do. And then we have this pink, which is called Easy Bake. So pretty, probably my favorite in the palette. This is a cool bubblegum metallic pink with shimmer. This lasted so long on my eyes and was just so, so pretty. And then this last one I'm gonna do right here. And that one is called Ice Ice Baby and it is a silver metallic. But if you guys, if we connect these two, can you see how alike those are as well? I just think that there is some redundancy in this palette that didn't need to exist. These two shades could have been, one of them could have existed in this palette and the other one didn't need to. These two shades, honestly, one could have existed and the other one didn't need to. If I had to pick one of them, I would pick this light gray because it is just so pretty. And if I had to pick one of these two, I would pick this green because the blue is just kind of not in it to win it, if that makes any sense. These are the nine shades in that palette. You guys can see they definitely are a little bit more pastel in nature. Definitely not like right up my alley or, you know, something that I typically go for. These, these colors are definitely not my jam, but I really did have a good time with this palette. I just wasn't, I guess the word is I just wasn't hugely inspired by it. Like I felt like I was like struggling to come up with an eye look that was cohesive and that just goes back to preference. I think that people that really love a pastel eye will love this palette. As you guys saw in the swatches, like I'll put them up here again, it is very pastel. It is a very pastel palette. And why I continue to purchase things that I know that I'm not going to 
necessarily love is beyond me but also like when you look at this palette like right off the bat there are some more pastel shades but I don't think it okay I'm not it screams pastel it truly does but I thought that these two and this one really were darker they kind of put put me into like that dark sultry eye kind of mood and they didn't necessarily give me that while I wouldn't say that that means that they lack pigmentation because I really do think that they're built in a way that they do lack the pigmentation in those three shades but I think truly what you see is what you're gonna get with this palette even those dark three shades that I was like I don't think I got what I thought I was going to get out of them you truly do get these three shades the way that they show up in a swatch you're truly getting that I don't know if it's dark enough to set the pastelliness of the rest of the shades in this palette apart um in my opinion I think also that it would have benefited this palette to have a matte or two in it that worked well with all the shadows so that I didn't have to struggle so hard <laughs> making this about me so that I didn't have to struggle so hard to put an eye look together and I will tell you one of my favorite eye looks has this blue in it even though it's not my favorite shade in the palette it is one of my favorite eye looks second favorite is the one that has the pink all over the lid with the purple towards the outer V um I think that I did create some really beautiful eye looks while utilizing this palette but it was hard to try and put it was hard for me to try and put the color schemes together appropriately I think that I am going to cut along the edges of this palette and try and fit the other nine glitch shadows into this palette because I think this would function for me more as single shadows than it does as a palette does that make sense because this is roughly the same, I don't know if it's the exact same formulation, but I do know it's roughly the same formulation as their highlighters. Because this is roughly the same formulation as their highlighters, they act on your eye like the highlighters do on your cheeks. And that, that highlighter formula is top three in my book. And because they are as similar to the highlight formula as they are, I love that you can also use these as a highlighter on your face and you could get you know a, a small highlight brush and get it into that pan or you can get it on your finger and just tap it so like if I took this one and just tapped it well I've got a pretty damn good highlight going right now but just tap it onto my face I mean, obviously, we need to blend that in. <laughs> but look at that. Holy Hades. And it's not like it, it looks bad. <laughs> okay, maybe it looks kind of wonky. I mean, it looks wonky. But it looks wonky because I picked the bright-ass white. Let's do it on the other side so we look the same. I look like a cyborg. Here's the true, the true tea to this. I actually love that. So you can see, even as a face highlight, these are truly stunning. They're beautiful on the eyes. What I can say is that if you are like really expecting like bam in your face color, you're probably not going to get that because these aren't, like these shadows do show up in these colors, but they're not, like they're not developed and formulated to give you matte pigmentation. They're developed and formulated to give you really beautiful shininess, but also color. So I, I love these. I'm not a huge fan of Ofra shadows. I do like these. I like these a lot. I have some Ofra matte shadows and even some Ofra satins, I do believe, that came in like my big like boho palette or something. I 
do not like those. I do not like those shadows whatsoever. I love these. I, I wouldn't say that they're my favorite. I wouldn't say that this palette is my favorite. Like I said, I am going to try and cut out that foaminess in there to see if I can make it like a Z, kind of like a Z palette or an individual magnetic palette because these definitely will function in my collection better as a single pan of eyeshadow than they do as a palette. And I'm going to, I think, put the other shadows from the other glitch palette that I have into that as well, because I foresee them being roughly the same, even though their color story is a little bit more muted. I see them roughly being the same and I can see me using them also as highlighters. Like if I'm interested in a crazy colored highlight, I will probably go to that eyeshadow formula. So with that said, we are going to pull a new palette. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I have a Samsung Note 9. I do use an app that I pulled from my Play Store called the Decide Now app, and this is what it looks like. We do put all of our palettes into this. We did put all of our palettes into this when we started this venture. And as I use them through palette roulette or declutter them, I do take them out of the wheel. As we get new ones in, I do put them into the wheel. And these are the ones that we are down to. We still have so many, so, so many. So to spin the wheel, we just press the button there and it's we just press that button there and it spins the wheel for us. So I am going to go ahead and do that now. So this is the Tarte Tardis Pro Remix palette. I've had this in my collection for so long, you guys, and I don't think I've ever used it. I am going to go get it. I will be right back. All right. So this is the Remix palette and this has one of those like... Can you guys hear that? It drives me absolutely bonkers. I try not to touch it as much as possible because my my little um, texture heart hates it so, so much. But I love the like, I love the palette. I think it was super different for Tarte. I love that it changes as you move the palette. I think that that's really cool. It was very, very different for Tarte. And when you open it up, it also looks very different for Tarte. So this is what the inside looks like. But I think if you cover up like this corner here and these two here, you will see that this is pretty much what Tarte looks like in a nutshell. Um, so this is our palette that we have to use for the next week. I am excited to use it, excited to come back to you and talk to you about it next week. And you guys, it's almost Christmas. How are you doing? How is it going? <laughs> I will tell you, I think I've said this uh, before, but I'm super thankful that my family is not doing Christmas gift exchange on Christmas Day this year because I am not ready. And there are, what is today? Today's 24th. There are four days. Four days. And I have to work all four of those days. So how the hell am I going to be ready for Christmas? I'm just not. That's just how it is. So um, I'm super thankful that my kids can't all get together this year until after the first. So that I have a little bit of extra time to go Christmas shopping. So there's that. So that's what I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that if you did, you're considering giving it a big thumbs up. It really does help our channels out here. It lets YouTube know that there are people out there watching our videos, liking our videos, actually enjoying our content and gives them some indication that maybe they should give our videos out to many more people out in the YouTube universe and get us some traction on potential growth for our channel. So I really do hope that you are choosing to give it a big thumbs up. I also hope that you liked it or me enough that you're considering subscribing before you go. It would warm my heart so much. I would love to have you along for this crazy midlife crisis of mine, but also have you be a brand new member in my amazing YouTube family and have you join me in my midlife crisis. And both of those things are totally free to do, but they really do help out my channel so, so very much. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Again, I do appreciate you coming and spending moments of your day with me because I know that you're choosing to do so. You don't have to, and that just 
man, warms my heart so, so very much. I hope that you guys are all safe and well. I hope that December is treating you well. I hope that you're ready for the holiday. I hope that you all are wearing your masks when you're out there in public. I would hate for you to come down sick, get this crazy virus going around, and we all know that there are those rogue individuals out there not wearing masks and spreading their germs out to God and everybody, and I would hate for you to be one of them. I hope that you guys are loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye everyone. You know how sometimes you just hate the way your makeup looks, but you don't got time for it to look like shit, so you just continue to move forward throughout the day? Yeah, I'm having one of those days. I think the biggest problem is that this eye will not stop watering. I think it's a mascara. I threw the mascara in my empties bin. All three of them, because I don't know which one it is, but this is the like third day in a row that I've used all three of those mascaras and all three of them my eye is watering and it doesn't water until I put the mascara on, so I have super sensitive eyes. What can you do?